Hi, Val Frania here. I'm going to try something a little different today. A lot of people have been complaining that their stuff's not selling. And I've been doing pretty good this year. Uh, but of course, we always want to do more, right? Well, before I get started, I want to tell you about a tip. I, I move a lot of my paint into glass jars because I'm finding that the uh, tin that a lot of paint comes in is rusting and messing with my paint. So I do move a lot to glass jars. Um, anyway, um, this is a really big coffee table and I want to do something different on it because I don't think it's going to be real easy to sell a big coffee table. If you're having trouble with your sales, try something different. Besides the fact it's really fun for creative to try different things, but as a creative and an entrepreneur, we need to be careful to create things that will sell. So unusual, different is good. Just make sure it can be sold. <laughs> you don't want to do anything too crazy. Uh, but I'm going to try something a little different on this piece. I've been in love with salt wash lately. I've been trying a lot of things and with uh, this big table, which it also has an end table that matches. Um, I want to do something different and maybe snag an unusual buyer. Uh, someone that likes someone that likes having pieces that are different from everyone else's houses. I think that's the key these days. Uh, we don't like the carbon copy stuff anymore. We, we like unusual. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out with, I take this off, so just this part here will be decorated with salt wash. And uh, you'll see what I'm going to do um, as I go along. Here's the paint, pouring navy blue. It's uh, General Finishes Midnight Blue. And then adding some salt wash to it, and then just gonna mix it up. going to apply the salt wash. It's pretty random. You just take a brush and dab. some left I can go back and add more texture. Make sure you turn your brush so you don't have just one type of design with your salt wash. You've seen those videos, those movies where the artist just flings their paint on the canvas in their studio. This kind of feels like that a little bit. It's fun. It's fun to do. And that's partly why I like salt wash. I mean, I do like the look. It looks, it gives such a beautiful background. Um, or just plain old surface. I mean, it's not like you have to use it for a background. That's what I'm, I think that's what I'm going to do today. And look around, make sure you don't have any distinct patterns because of the way your brush is designed. There's my nice line. And I am going to let this dry and then I will show you what I'm gonna do with it in a bit. It's not gonna dry completely before I work on it again, but I need to give it a few minutes and then I'll show you what to do next. Now I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna just lay down some of the peaks. I'm gonna use one of my um, Reticut Wonder Brushes and it's real a real soft bristle. 
and I'm just gonna very gently knock down some of those peaks now that it's had a few minutes to do a little bit of drying. Now I'm not putting any pressure on it. I'm just letting the brush do its thing. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's just knocking down the really tall peaks. And if you do it this way and you see it's not enough, then just go over it again with a little bit of pressure. I like this, so I am gonna stick with this. And then I'm gonna let it dry for a few hours and then I'll come back and show you what the next step is. What do you think I'm going to be making? While you wait, take your guess as to what design I am going to be coming up with here. Okay, it's the next day now, and I'll explain my process because I had to really think this one through. This section right here, I had to tape, you saw that it was all taped off, and I did the salt wash and navy blue, so we've got our peaks and valleys are all dry. And then I took the Retika wooden primer and I painted the whole thing a couple coats. The reason I did this, I had to really think this through because I want this section to be separate, but I also want it to mesh. <clears throat> so my plan was to do liquid wood, a grain over here and stain it, and then I was just gonna paint over this and sand it. But I need it, even though you tape, the line isn't necessarily crisp, and I wanted it to coordinate, and if I'm gonna stain this, then this would be way lighter if I used this paint over this and then sand it. So anyway, I know I'm probably confusing you, but this is the process. <clears throat> I did the salt wash in navy blue, then I took the Retika wooden primer and I painted two coats. And now I am going to do the liquid wood that I'm gonna texture over here, sand through here, but I had to figure out how I would stain it. So I'm doing liquid wood over top of it, and which this is the bleached wood, over top all of it, gonna stain it. Then I'm gonna do my sanding over here. That way it's going to be consistent throughout. So that's what you're gonna see today. I've never done this before and I had to really think it through how to coordinate each section so it goes together, but they're still different. So that's where I'm at right now. I'm going to use the same brush I used to paint this on. You know, I don't ever do things the way I'm supposed to do them. I kind of figure it out a different way that will suit my needs. And I'm using, this is normally a wax brush. I often will use this to stencil as well. I'm going to use this to get this liquid wood on and then do a little bit of a fancy thing over here. So you'll see, you'll see, just watch. Oh, I probably should tuck this in, huh? Oh, this, by the way, is a tip. <clears throat> you know, these are little flexible cutting boards that you have in your kitchen. When you're done with them up there, bring them down here and use them to hold your paint. Okay, so I stirred that up really well. The liquid wood has a new formula, by the way, and uh, it lasts longer than it did before. Before you had to hurry up and use it up or it'd solidify, and they have a new formula now to where it will last. It will last a whole lot longer than before. This is uh, Retika's Gel Stain and Glaze, barn wood. I shook it up really well. 
And now I'm just going to paint it on and see what it looks like and then uh, go from there. I might add a brown stain over it to make it look even more weathered. I don't know. It's all an experiment. <laughs> Have the stain on both sides and very even I'm going back with my brush and using the brush in the stain I'm creating a wavy pattern on the right side of the table next comes a rag to wipe off the excess on the left side and then to let it dry and then one coat of poly on the right side It's time to deal with this section. There's a couple different things that you can do. You can use a hand sander, like an electric sander. I could use my random orbital, which I have done in the past, or I could just use this flexible sandpaper I'm wrapping around, like this, or I could even use a high grit sanding block. This is a foam one. I'm going to start out with this because I really don't know how deep I want to go with it. So I'm just going to start with this and give you an idea of what we're looking at. Yeah, that's too much work. I'm going to pull out my random orbital and hook it up to my Festool dust collector. I'm taking off the tape that helped me divide it. I was a little afraid of getting the right side uh, sanded with my orbital, so now I'm hand sanding just that little strip there to make sure some of the blue is gonna show through. With a wet rag, I'm wiping off the sanding dust. I wanna see how it's gonna look after I get poly on it. Really brings out the blue. Now I'm adding a navy blue stripe down between the two designs to separate them. This is how I get really nice and crisp lines. I tape and then use my stencil brush rather than a regular brush just to paint down the strip. Seems to work better. Mm -hmm. 